Welcome to my channel. I am Rosemary G. Jager. I've started my business just to make people happy with my crafts. I make all kinds of things. You can check my things out on Facebook. I will link the I will link the link below for you to follow. Today we are making gingerbread. I hope you like this video. If you if there's anything I need to do to change it, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks. For this project, you're going to need your plastic canvas gingerbread ornament, your little booties, which you can find at Dollarama, your mitts, which you can also find at Dollarama, your little hats, which you can find at Dollarama, your Glue six week hot glue gun, which you can find either at Walmart, Michaels, or Dollarama. Your googly eyes, which you can find at any craft store, Dollarama, or Walmart. And your little tiny pom poms, which are hard to come by, and you can find them at your local Michaels if you have one, Lens Mill. Today we're working on gingerbread man ornaments. First we start, we start off by cutting out the shapes. You will want to, to measure what you're cutting out. For the big gingerbread man, they, they are 16 by 19 squares on a 7 mesh plastic canvas sheet. The small ones are 15 by 18. So here I'm cutting out the big gingerbread mints, which are 16 by 19 square. Now when cutting out plastic canvas, you want to make sure you keep the squares intact. Then once you've done cutting one out, you will have the this edge here where there's only one line and not a full close square. That line you will want to cut off to start your next square. For most of my pa my patterns, I make them up myself as I go along. And once you're done cutting them out, you will have these small ones that you cannot use for this one project. You do not want to throw them away. Here we have enough squares to make three and a half gingerbread. You will need two squares alone to make one ornament. Now we're going to start cutting out the gingerbread man. There will be spots where you will screw up at times while cutting these out. It takes some practice to get used to cutting out the shape. For me, it happened. I screw up maybe three or four times before I get the right one I need to cut out. Off 
I have already screwed up three times cutting this up. So we will see what happens now. There we have the front side of the gingerbread. Now you want to repeat this step to make the back side. Here we're cutting out the back side of the gingerbread. At this point, after screwing up three or four times now, I don't, pretty much don't need the pattern. Look at. Now you have the front and back of the ornament. For this next step, you can use any color of, of yarn you use. I love to use red heart yarn as it's thick enough where it fits in the holes and you won't see the plastic canvas. 
Right now, we are just going to work on the stripes of the gingerbread. I like to use one stitch for this part. You can use any color you want. Right now, I am using red. So you want to do five to single stitch on the bottom of the legs for the stripes there. And then you want to do three stitch on both arms for the stripes on, uh, on the gingerbread's arms. And once you finish one leg, you want to go on the back and go through those stitches to end your leg. You do not want to have red yarn run you across from one leg to the other and have it in the way. You want to repeat the same step on the second leg with the five st stitches five single stitches of red. You always want to make sure once you do the first stitch you have a little bit of yarn going across the back of it and have that yarn tucked in under your stitches so when you start off. So when, once it's done the yarn doesn't come off. So you want to do the same ending process with this leg. Go to the back, go under all your stitches, and pull through. Now for the arms, you repeat the same process, but you have fewer stitches. The arms on the big gingerbread, you have three single stitches going across but you want to repeat the same steps you can use the single stitch to do the buttons as well, but you don't have to. You can also use pom-poms for the buttons. And you can do the same stitches for the eyes. There you have the front part of the gingerbread man done. Now for the back. The back you do the same process. Five single stitches on the bottom of the legs and three single stitches for the arms.
So right now I'm working on the second leg, then I'm going on to the arm. Here I have the two legs done on the back end. Now I'm doing the arms. You can follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll have the links down below. Now these gingerbread I sell for $3 each. Or four for ten. Our Facebook page is called Rosemary's Homemade Creations. And there you have it. You have the red, the red done on the back and front of the gingerbread. The next step is to work on the next color. This, this next color I'm using is a dark brown, also by Red Heart. For this one, you for this one you use many steps, stitches. You have the single stitch. You have the triple stitch. And by stitch, by stitches I mean, you have. For a single stitch, you only do two squares. We go diagonal across the pattern. That's a single stitch. How many holes you do is bigger the stitch. Remember guys, if there's anything I'm doing wrong in these videos, remember this is still my, my first time trying to do, do these videos, as in the new year I want to get better at them and post more. If there's anything that I can do to change how I do these videos, please let me know. My videos, as I make them, they are done in different parts. As when I am done working on the project, I will go on my computer and put them all together to make a full video. At some point, I will try to invest in a tripod so these videos will be different again and hopefully better.
Now come to the last stitch. You do the last stitch and then when finishing it off, you bring your needle through the back under the yarn again to finish off. And there you have the front of your of your gingerbread man done. Now we're going to be working on the back of the gingerbread. Over the years, I started doing plastic canvas when I was a kid. Back then, I was only doing it for myself and family. Now, I try to sell my crafts that I make throughout the year, either from home or at craft shows. I have a Facebook page where I will put the link down below. My Facebook page is called Rosemary's Homemade Creations. Or you can find us also on Twitter, Instagram, or we have another Facebook account, which is called Rosemary's. There I post all, all my crafts I make. I make from plastic canvas crafts, greeting cards, tea lights, you name it. My mom was the one, the one that first started out with craft shows when my sisters and I were kids. Throughout the years, I've been going to craft shows with my mom since 2007. Back then, I was doing jewelry. From, I was making jewelry from seed beads. That took up a lot of my time. And they weren't selling no more, so I decided to change things up. I started doing greeting cards. 3D greeting cards. They were selling. Now, they're not, they don't sell as much as my other crafts do. But I continue to work on them throughout the year. My plastic canvas crafts, on the other hand, during certain times of year, certain things sell faster than others. Right now, lately, it's been my sticky note covers, where I will make a sticky note cover and I will sell it with a pen and sticky note. Those sell pretty fast. For me, I don't know about a lot of crafters, but for me, when I go on vacation, I try to bring craft supplies along with me. This year, my fam my parents and I, we went to Holland in June just to get away from the winter we had last year. We were sick and tired of the cold, so we decided to go to Holland. And... I did bring some stuff with me to work on, but that stuff was done within the first two or three days I was there. We spent the following Tuesday, so the first Tuesday we were there, and we landed on the Thursday. We spent that Tuesday looking around for craft stores just to buy more stickers for me to work on. And those stickers didn't last me long either. I was on coloring them in before we left. So if I go, I go on vacation, I spend the day visiting family, sightseeing, whatever I feel like doing. But I come home, first thing I do as soon as, soon as I come in the door, I go straight to my craft supplies and I start working on them. Some say I'm a craftaholic, 
I have my craft supplies laying all over the house. Downstairs in my office, downstairs in my, in my bedroom, in the living room, everywhere you'll see my craft supplies. Upstairs, I mainly have my plastic canvas crafts, and downstairs, I have the rest of my stuff. I am always working on a new project, either if it's just working on the project or working on the pattern. And here we have the back of the gingerbread man. So we have the front and the back. Now for our next step is we stuff the gingerbread man. So what I like to do is usually I keep my scraps of yarn laying around the house and use that for stuffing. But today since I don't have any of that left, I will take some of this brown yarn I'm working on and just cut it up into pieces. And I'll use that to stuff the gingerbread man. For this next step, you're going to use both gingerbread mans and try to sew them together. This is pretty much the closest to the sewing you will find me doing. I am not a good sewer. I don't even want to try to sew things properly. Coming to sewing things, I will leave that up to my mom to do. I am not a sewer. Now for the stuffing, you want to try to get the pieces as, as small as possible. You can stuff your gingerbread man however thickness you want the gingerbread ornament to be. And there we have our stuffing, ready to be stuffed into the gingerbread. Now for this next step, you want to grab both your front and backing. Now on the back of the gingerbread, you know that they're not so nice. You have the open spots on some spots. You want to put them both together, have them both put together, and then just start weaving your needle through the holes. Always make sure when, you, when you're when starting a new strand of string, you have a little piece hanging off the side, and you start working your way around it by filling it in with the holes. That string, you want to make sure that it's there secure. For me, I like to hold the string while I'm trying to go cover up with the other stitches so it doesn't move. And then slowly while you're doing the outside of your gingerbread man, you want to slowly start using the stuffing to put inside. Like what I like to do is when I'm halfway done a certain part of the body, that's when I will start using the stuffing. Most part of this movie is taken in parts. As my phone will only record so much at, at a certain time. So I will, once I'm done filming and recording all different parts of my movie, I will go on my computer and start putting it, editing it all together. At some point, hopefully in the new year, 
I will we'll get a tripod and start filming at different angles. But we will see how that goes. I will also try to... I don't know if I want to do it weekly, post new videos, or daily. It all depends on what I can do during the day. On weekends, I might just post card videos, or I might not post at all. See, here I have half the head done and half of the one arm done. Now I will go in with some stuffing. I like to crumple up in my hand and then just stuff it in there. So they pop out. So they aren't so flat. Or if you want to make them flat, then you only need the one gingerbread and then just glue felt to the back of it. I will only record videos when it's just me home. That way I have no one interfering with me or anything. And I can take my time on doing a craft. And actually talk during the video. Unless I'm downstairs in my office, then I can do it there too. But I'm usually only in my office working on crafts at night time. During the day... I am mostly upstairs working. Now we're working on the lake. Once I have half the lake put together, I will start doing the stuffing. Now that I'm almost done, halfway done this leg, I will start putting the stuffing in. Depends on the thickness you want, you can, you can put as much stuffing in, in there to your liking.
the earth plastic canvas we used to get at Michael's, but Michael's no longer sells plastic canvas. So you can either buy it online or Walmart still sells it. But even if you're in the States, any craft store in the States, they sell it. Here we almost have our second leg done. Once I get around the corner of the leg, this part right here, that's when I'll start stuffing this leg. As we're at this point, we're stuffing the gingerbread, we get a little tricky to do. Because you don't have that big of an opening to start stuffing the gingerbread man. That's probably about the last bit of the stuffing you will need in your gingerbread man. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And I will try my best to get back to everyone as soon as possible. And don't forget to like our video if, if you want to see more stuff like this. When finishing off the edges of your plastic canvas craft, sometimes they can be hard to do, sometimes they can't. Like for instance, this gingerbread man, it's a little difficult because you have a front and back put together, but you also have it stuck. So going through the stitches on the top won't be as easy as other projects would. Like, like what I like to do with the gingerbread, when, during the last one, I like to go through 
go through the head to the other side. Now finding a, a ho opening on the other side for the needle to pop out sometimes is a little tricky. Then pulling your, your needle through can also be a bit tricky. So if you can't get it through, try to pull it back and go through a different angle. And then just cut it off. There you have your gingerbread. Now for, to hang it, you go through the middle just once. Cut the string so that both sides are even, just like that, and tie a knot. You can single knot it or you can double knot it. Do whatever is to your liking. And there you have your gingerbread man ornament ready to be glued. So today we're going to be making gingerbread man ornaments. We are going to be gluing the hat on. The eyes. And the two buttons. That is just the one with the hat. For the next one, you will need the mitts, the boots, the hat, eyes, and buttons. Now you do the same steps. Glue the hat on. Glue the eyes on. Glue the buttons on. Glue the mitts on. And there you have the one with the hats and mitts. 
You can also do one where you only have the buttons and the eyes. You glue the eyes on. Then you glue the buttons on. And then you have that one. Now we're going to be working on the big gingerbread. You start by gluing on the hats. While you use a hot glue gun, try not to burn yourself. As the glue can get very hot. And sometimes when you're working with hot glue gun, you'll find that you have all these strands of hot glue strings everywhere. Those are very easy to peel off your projects. Then you glue on the eyes. As you can tell, I'm working on three different gingerbread mans here. You got the ones with the hats, the ones with the hat, gloves, and, mitt and boots, and then you have one with just the eyes and buttons. Next, you glue on the buttons. The buttons are just little tiny pom-poms that you can find either at Michael's, Michael's, Dollarama, or Lens Mill. They're not easy to come by. Once you, when you do find them, make sure you stock up on them. Next, you glue on the mitts. And finally, you glue on the boots. You need to pull off, off all the little strands of hot glue that's laying ever over your project if you work on more than one at a time. And there you have them. Your gingerbread man ornaments.